the Bosphorus divides the Turkish city of Istanbul into European and Asian parts. For thousands of years, this strait has bound the two continents tightly together. The Istiklal stretches from Taksim Square to the southwest. In less than 10 years, this traditional residential district has turned into a bustling day and night shopping and commercial zone. Here consumers can find whatever their heart desires, from the most expensive designer dresses to the simplest services. Among the structures not yet architecturally violated is the Chichek Pasayi, the flower passage. Every day the waiters in the 10 restaurants competing here in the cramped conditions do everything they can to attract customers. If someone fancies fish, the waiter fetches a selection from the adjacent fishmonger and lets the customer take their pick. The Chichek Passage is a rectangular arcade, a sort of miniature version of Milan's famous Galleria. It was built after a devastating fire in 1870 and was originally called the Cité de Pera. The Ottoman Grand Vizier Ali Pasha deliberately promoted the Europeanization of Istanbul at that time and granted Christians the same rights as his Islamic subjects. After the Russian Revolution, the arcade was a large flower market, which provided a modest income mainly for impoverished Russian nobles who had fled their homeland. Today, up to 1,500 meals are served here daily, as well as the ever-present chai, Turkish black tea served by hawkers in the traditional tulip-shaped glasses. Although the Istiklal is very busy during the day, at night, the number of visitors grows exponentially. It's a struggle to make your way through it right up to midnight. Business thrives in upscale boutiques and also on the street, even as now on a Sunday. Wherever there is lots of money in circulation, there is bound to be some shady undergrowth. Street vendors selling mussels appear on a corner and are soon gone. They have to be on their guard at all times. If the police come, they simply take our stand away because our activity is illegal. Things are probably not as clean here as the authorities would have you believe. Whatever the case, right after the interview, an inconspicuous man with a tie extracts an informer's fee of 50 francs from the shellfish vendor. The Golden Horn is an arm of the sea, around seven kilometers long. It has always been highly important for the city of Istanbul. The city of Byzantium came into being 2,600 years ago, where the Golden Horn opens out into the Marmara Sea. The Golden Horn also had strategic significance for the later city of Constantinople. A natural harbour basin, protected from the wind and the weather, it served as a safe refuge for the fleets of all Istanbul's rulers. Its relatively narrow entrance, spanned today by two bridges, was easy to defend and occasionally was even closed off with a chain. Istanbul's most important monuments are located at the southern entrance to the Golden Horn, Topkapı, Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque. The Topkapı Palace was the seat of government and the residence of the sultans from the 16th to the 20th centuries. Spread over four courtyards, up to 5,000 representatives of the Ottoman administration were housed. The second courtyard housed a variety of kitchens, which at times prepared up to 6,000 meals per day. But only a selected circle of people were allowed into the innermost sanctum through the Gate of Felicity. Since 1923, the Topkapı Museum complex has enjoyed huge popularity. 
Here, visitors can admire stunning architecture and untold wealth in an exclusive setting. Istanbul's number one landmark is the Hagia Sophia. This domed basilica was built in the 6th century and is considered to be the last great building of late antiquity. The span of the dome is about 32 meters and the height from the floor to the apex is 55. Since 1932, the Hagia Sophia has been a museum where all the treasures remaining from its eventful history as a Byzantine Christian church and also an Ottoman mosque are on display. In a side room, you can track the history of the Hagia Sophia, from its predecessors in 325, through its development as the main Christian church of the Byzantine Empire by Justinian, up to the conquest of Constantinople in 1453 by Mehmed II and its transformation into a mosque. The Eastern uh, Rome, that is Istanbul, um, survived a much longer time because it was not on the way of these Germanic uh, tribes and hordes uh, pouring into Europe. It was safer. Um, but for the Ottomans to conquer the city uh, was very important. Western Rome <clears throat> had already vanished. This was the one Rome <clears throat> that remained. And if you conquer it, then you are the Caesar of Rome. And that's how Mehmet the Conqueror started signing his letters, his uh, formal diplomatic letters, to uh, especially the, the Western countries. He would uh, call himself Kayseri Iklimi Rum, meaning uh, Caesar of the Roman climb. <laughs> From half to three quarters of its height, the Hagia Sophia is surrounded by a 10,000 meter square gallery, which offers breathtaking views both inside and outside the church. Here, some remains of the original decorations have been uncovered. There are many depictions of Jesus Christ, along with ones of the various Byzantine dynasties, and plenty of gold mosaic. 145 tons of gold is said to have been used by Justinian alone. Time to switch from European to the Anatolian side of Istanbul. Since 1973, the European and Asian parts of Istanbul have been connected by the first Bosphorus Bridge. In 1988, a second was opened to the north of it. But nobody would dream of driving over the bridges just to get a view of the European side from the Chamlicha Hill, as the access roads are chronically congested. So the Anatolian visitors have Chamlicha almost to themselves. This is certainly the case for the fans of the Fenerbahce football club. There is nothing they like better than when Fener thrashes its European rivals and creases league team Galatasaray. A Fenerbahce home match is in any case a folk festival with 60 to 70,000 spectators. Even on a relatively unimportant occasion, like this match against Antalya, and their loyalty is unshakable. No men were allowed into the stadium for a match in spring because of riots. Those who can't be inside the stadium enjoy watching the games at a restaurant next door and then celebrate with those who manage to get in. The Swiss international and Juventus defender Reto Ziegler on loan to Fenerbahce and here with the ball is overwhelmed by the atmosphere. But people's total solidarity with the football clubs also has its dark side. Despite repeatedly proven manipulation of games, 
there is an agreement throughout the league that nobody should be held responsible. Even before the trials in court, all the participants have already been absolved by the association. Bread and circuses, as in ancient Rome. The village of Poloneskoy, founded 150 years ago by Polish mercenaries of the Sultan, has not yet been swallowed up by the city of Istanbul. On fine weekends, many city residents are prepared to take the two-hour drive to Poloneskoy to indulge in a national hobby, picnicking. There are vast green spaces and forests, and another flourishing business has developed there. At the roadside, waiters and a smoldering barbecue attract the customers, and their almost every wish is fulfilled. Children? No problem. There are playground equipment and sports facilities for all ages. <laughs> a grill? It's already there, filled with glowing coals. You don't even have to stand up to cook the chicken thighs or lamb chops you've brought with you. No meat to hand? No problem. There's also a butcher who chops off whatever a barbecue fan's heart desires. And for maximum convenience, the picnic area Dere Livadi, meaning River Valley, offers its own barbecue service with tableware. Like a Munich beer garden, only Turkish, everything is a little further away, a little bigger, a lot cheaper, and very easygoing. 